faster. So I'm going to bring in Jane Moore. Uh, Jane, you're welcome. Okay. I've got my yeah. app. Okay. So I'm bringing it on. Yeah. So you can, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm really pleased to have to be here with you today. Um, my my topic is organizing your course. And I know that uh, for me at least, using a PowerPoint or some kind of tool to keep myself in line is, is really important to, uh, to me because it's very easy to start talking about something and losing your bearings in your course. So that's one clue that I might give you right from the start. Um, the second thing to do before you're teaching online, of course, is to plan your content. Now, you'd do this if you were teaching face-to-face -face or online, but I think it's important to, to go over those important um, steps to take before you start to teach. First of all, you need to consider what it is that you um, want students to come away with. So if you haven't written your objectives for the course, I would re write them first. Now, what is it that you want students to learn? And what are the important milestones you want students to achieve? Those things are going to help you decide how you organize your course and how you uh, plan your assessments in the course. In other words, if you want students to be able to do a certain task, how are you going to determine if they can do that? Now, in a face-to-face -face class, of course, that might be a little bit easier because you can physically see them do them do it in front of you. However, in an online course, you might have to think about a way to assess the student's knowledge in a way either by a video or by a, a written um, exam or however you are tasked um, or a project. You want to think about how you're going to determine if they've met your objectives for the course. So what kind of tests you would have or examinations? What kind of projects you would have the students do? Are you going to have the students work as a group? Are you going to have them work as individuals? If you have them work as a group, you need to think about how you're going to assess them. Are you going to give everyone in the group the same grade? Or are you going to have students individually submit parts of the project to you and grade them on what they have done? The same thing is true of individual work. How are you going to assess what the students do and whether or not they are actually learning what you had in mind for them? The other thing you want to think about in assessment is how often are you going to do it? Are you going to do it weekly? Are you going to do it monthly? Do you have um, a semester length thing where you're going to do it midway and then at the end? All these things need to figure into the planning you make for your course. I'm a firm believer in having all that spelled out for students in as clear a way as possible. And with that in mind, the idea for me is that you create your syllabus with your online student in mind. It's so important to make your syllabus friendly and, and phrase things positively. So often we see syllabi that tell students what will happen if they do things wrong. And it gives the students a real negative impression. I put up in the uh, content for this week, Tulane University's Accessible Syllabus. It really changed my whole approach to writing syllabi for students because it's a positive way. It's a way that gives students the, the um, message that you really care about them and you care about their learning. And I think that's what you want students to know ahead of time. You also want to set really clear expectations and deadlines. Just because you're positive and empathetic doesn't mean that you want to that you don't want to set up things. This is especially true with discussion boards. I find that if you don't set deadlines for discussion boards, everyone waits till the end of the week and there's no discussion. There's only individuals posting. So when I taught online 
and I did started teaching online in 2002 and uh, finished teaching online in 2018. Uh, it was really clear that my students had to do an initial post by a Wednesday, for example, and then had to do their follow-up post by Saturday so that everyone knew that between Wednesday and Saturday, there were going to be things to react to. If you don't have that initial post deadline set up, then everyone waits till the end of the week. And again, there's no discussion. Another thing to do in your syllabus is make it clear that you will be available to answer questions. So, for example, you can say, I log into the course every morning or I log into the course twice a day and I'll be happy to answer any questions that come up. Or you might say, the easiest way to reach me with a question is email. On the other hand, you might think about the fact that if a student posts a question, that student is not the only person with that particular question. And so your response to them may eliminate five or six or 10 questions that are the same from other students. Again, it's a decision you have to make and you have to consider your time. It's really, really easy to get sucked into an online class and be online for hours at a time and not feel that you can ever step away from it. So I think it's really important that you make it clear to students what your expectations are, what the deadlines are, and the fact that you're available to them. One of the things that I learned about in an online in a conference was to do a walk through the syllabus. For many of us, the first day of class, we talk to students about expectations for the whole year. We look at the syllabus with them. We tell them what we expect and so on. But in an online class, we post the syllabus and hope for the best. So one of the things I did was a YouTube video called Walk Through the Syllabus. And I looked at the syllabus the same way I would in a face-to-face -face class talked about expectations, talked about ways to get in touch with me, talked about each of the assignments. And that way, the students can always go back and listen to it and watch it again and see, maybe answer their questions before they have to ask you the same question over and over. In doing your syllabus, you want to make sure that any assignment you give students is clear. They know what is expected. They know when it's due. Again, I learned to make a walk through the assignment so students could revisit that. In terms of what's expected, I always created a rubric for every assignment telling students what was expected, what was the baseline grade, what was a, a higher grade, what was the highest grade. In other words, what should they do to attain whatever grade they wanted to get in the course? Um, and that, while it does take a lot of upfront time, it makes your grading so much easier. Another thing that is helpful in an online class is to make a class calendar as part of the syllabus so students know what's happening when and when those deadlines occur. You can even send out messages. Don't forget that your assignment is due a week from today or closer in. You have uh, the deadline for the assignments is tomorrow at midnight. Be sure that you complete by then. Also, you need to recognize that technical difficulties happen and be empathetic. When you're teaching a face-to-face -face course, what often happens is that um, you have students come in and say, um, you know, my computer broke and I couldn't print it out or my dog ate my homework or many of the other um, excuses that we've all heard in our teaching careers. When you're teaching online, those technical difficulties can happen and happen frequently. For example, you may be in the middle of doing an assignment and the power goes out and you lose your work. One way to deal with that is to re recognize and tell students that you need to save your work constantly so that if the power goes out, you um, have the material. 
one of the things I tell students in an online course is if you're getting ready to post in a discussion board, write out your post in a Word document or a Google Docs document, and then copy and paste it into the discussion board. That way, if the power goes out, you still have your your comment and you can put it in later when you're able to access the course. None of us like to have a student always have excuses, but recognize that if we treat students with kindness, that they will do their best. And I think that's one of the important things in an online course is to set up a community where people trust each other. So how do you connect with your online students? I think the first thing is that you introduce yourself with a picture and information about yourself and you ask your students to do the same. I think it's important when you that you respond to each introduction. And I usually put um, a disclaimer saying, I don't expect you all to respond to each person who comes into the class, but I will, just as if I were in a face-to-face -face class, I'd say hello as they walked in the door. So I do respond to every introduction in my online classes. I try to use the student's name and find some kind of connection. So I might say, oh, I have a dog too, or my sister studied art, um, my sister's a graduate of that university, just some way to make a connection with the students. Then I make a copy of the introductions or at least jot down information about each student so that when the student is responding in class, I know who is responding. I know something about them. Um, for example, I had a student one time say that um, one of the issues she was dealing with in the class is that her mother was very ill. So from time to time, I would just write her a little note and say, how's your mom doing? It makes people feel that you care. And of course, if you're an educator, you do. I think it's also very important, and I have to admit this is something I learned way down the road in my online teaching, is to set expectations when you're available. Um, when I was teaching at National Lewis University here in Chicago, we did a survey of online students and we talked to them about what their expectations were for um, getting papers back that had been turned in or projects and getting responses from their, their uh, professors. Surprisingly, or maybe not, <laughs> they expected that papers would be returned within 24 hours and that's, that teachers would, um, would reply to any of their questions within several hours. That's just not humanly possible unless you sit at your computer all day long and none of us have that luxury. So set expectations. I'll be checking the questions once every day and once on the weekend. If you need me immediately, email me and I'll respond within 24 hours. It may seem harsh to you, but it's um, an important part of self-preservation. Trust me on that one. Always remember, and I think this is just part of being a kind human being, be generous with giving students leeway on assignment deadlines, but also remind them that they have to check in with you before submitting a late assignment. If a student writes me and says, I'm just overwhelmed, I can't get it in by Friday, what I usually say to them is, when do you think you can turn it in to me? And if they say something reasonable, like in three days, I say, fine, that works. If a student turns in an assignment late and hasn't checked with me, I often write them an email, a personal email and say to them, I didn't notice that you asked for an extension on your paper. Did, it, did I miss it in the email? And then they will either say, no, I forgot or whatever. And I'll tell them that that will be reflected in their grade. So. 
On the other hand, you want to keep some sort of balance with what's expected, but you also need to be caring and kind and think about your students and what they're going through right now. So um, that is sort of the gist of what I was talking about. Uh, I know that some of you will have lots of questions and some of the things that I've said may not apply to each one of your situations, but I hope that you will think about these things, that you will look at the um, content that I put up in the module for this week. And um, after you've looked at it, think about any questions or concerns that you might have.